Want to watch as I restore this, my favorite, most valuable shirt in my collection, the Holland 1988 home shirt? Then check this video out. Hello there. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you on the journey as I restore one of my favorite shirts of all time, the Holland 1988 home shirt. Now, this shirt was made famous by uh, players like Frank Reichard, uh, Rude Hulley, and of course, Marco Van Basten scoring that iconic goal, that volley against the USSR in the European Championship. And it's also made famous by the fact that it was only ever worn five times by Holland in that European Championship. And it's the only trophy that they've ever won, only major trophy. So it's held dear by a lot of football shirt collectors, Dutch and otherwise. And I reckon if you were to talk to any other football shirt collector. They would have this in their top five or top 10 of shirts that they would love to collect. Now this shirt is actually a template called the Ipswich template that Adidas created for a few other teams in the late 80s. You had the USA and Porto that both had blue ones. You had West Germany that had a green one. You had the uh, USSR that had a red one. And you had Dortmund that had a yellow one. And ironically, Ipswich Town, who the, the template is named after. They didn't actually make use of it, but I reckon it would look quite good for them. Well, fun fact, there's a rumor, an urban, urban legend. Don't you guys get it? Come on, it's just like that urban legend. And the, the away shirt for Holland during the Euro 98 EA was the blue version of this. And you will see examples of this online in, on eBay and Vinted, etc., where they sold for exorbitant amounts as vintage Holland away 1988 shirts. The reality is they ever away shirt was a plain, pretty plain white one. And the blue one was never used by Holland. So don't get fooled by that and don't spend your hard earned money on one of those. Now there's about five different versions of this shirt because during the Euro Championship, Believe it or not, it wasn't actually available to buy. It's only after the European Championship that Adidas sent out the, the design to, to their various different locations and had them make it. So you've got the West German one, you've got the Jaspo one, you've got the UK one, you've got the South American one, and you've got this one, which is the Irish one. And you can tell it's the Irish one because the plain collar and the nice bold colors. And actually, if I go on tiptoes, what you'll see, well, what you can't see is that there was a quite a large trefoil and quite a fine, with a lot of detail, Holland badge. So that's how you can tell that this is the lovely Irish one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and take this shirt back to its former glory. Like I say, down there, you can just about see the residue from the quite large trefoil. And just over here, you can just about see the residue from the old badge. All that's left is this little bogey of flock that we'll pick off. But let's recreate a new badge, recreate a new trefoil, and take this shirt back to its former glory. So here is my Silhouette Studio work sheet, if you like. What we have is this photo here is taken from the, this shows the Adidas trefoil. This photo here shows what's left of the, the badge residue. And we've got a ruler in shot. So what we need to do is we need to size both these photos so that they're in scale. And we've got another video that talks through exactly how to do it. But just quickly, here is a box that I've created that's pretty much 20 millimeters wide. And so long as the box matches up with the ruler. So if we zoom in, you can see that that box matches up with two millimeters on the ruler. So we know that both these photos or this photo is in scale and you can do the same for the other photo. And you can see that it is pretty much bang on for the other photo. So both these photos are now to scale. And in true Blue Peter fashion, here is an Adidas trefoil that I made earlier. So we're gonna flip that horizontally because we're gonna cut the back of it. And that lines up perfectly over the residue. And over here, we've got the 
badge for the shirt. Now on this Irish version, as I say, the badge is a lot finer. There's a lot more detail to the lion on the badge. And it's one of the ways that um, you can identify the Irish version versus the other version. And here's a picture of it on a shirt. And what this shows is kind of the evolution of tracing an image. So down here, this is a, a, a JPEG, if you like, or a PNG of the file, which is no good if you want to cut it. And this here is now where we've started to vectorize the image so that it turns into a cut file. And you can see there's a little bit little bit of messiness around it but we've got another video that shows you how to how to trace that as well and we'll put a link to all of these in the description and over here is the finished article now this particular one i got from my friend bagas at font football um he is fantastic so i'll put a link to his uh, website site in the description so anything you need vectorized images or what have you you can give them a shout but you can see now that if i line that badge up over the residue and then zoom in you can see that that is bang on so what i'm going to do now is let's zoom out again because it's f they're both flock i'm going to be flipping it horizontally cutting the back so let's cut it and then go and press it. Here is the results of my vinyl cutting or flock cutting. You can see there, a nice, fine, intricate badge and a pretty oversized Adidas trefoil. So I've taken that little bogey off of there, but I'm gonna use the residue that's there. It's very faint, but it's there. I'm gonna use that residue to as a, a guide for repressing things in the right place now we've done videos before about how to to do the perfect press but just to kind of recap a little bit you got your pressing pad there to stop images from the front and back kind of coming together we're going to use some teflon sheet to protect the material and we're going to use some heat tape just to keep everything in place now what i'm going to do is i am going to line up the badge so that it covers the residue and I, I did it on screens in the last shot you saw it on screen so it was pretty good i mean it should be bang on in terms of size and scale so let's just use some application tape to tape it down let's just have one last little check oh, i think that looks pretty good okay so that's going down and now we've got single layer flock trefoil. Use the outline there. Got to make sure because there's horizontal lines on the shirt, you've got to make sure that it's straight. Otherwise it will jump out a mile. So let's get this lined up. I think that's in a good place. So let's tape that down. There we go, right. Get the Teflon sheet in place. Always use this to protect the, the material. Some Not everyone chooses to, but I just think you're crazy not to, because otherwise you'll get some nasty scorch marks on, on the material. And let's press it. Turn that off. Remove like that. Oh, let's get the application tape off. This particular flock, I get it from a company called um, The Magic Touch, and they're really good. They do some good, some good flock um, and good vinyl. It's meant to have like a, a warm to hot peel. So let's let it cool down a little bit, if nothing else, so that I don't burn my fingers because it's pretty hot. Let's just get this application tape off. Let's give it a peel. It's very fine, so you've got to make sure you peel it very carefully so you don't pull off any of the detail. The badge looking good. And let's do the trefoil. How? And here you have it, the finished article. Look at that. This beautiful shirt, one of my all time favorites, is back looking as it should do. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or any questions, please leave them in the comments section. Please remember to click like and subscribe because it really helps us with the algorithm. And see you next week.